What's up everyone, Alex here. With the recent release of Wulong Fallen Dynasty, I thought it was the right time to make a video helping people get into Souls and Souls-like games. After all, it's one of the most intimidating genres to get into by pure reputation alone. Whether it's the obtuse storytelling, which hides the narrative behind obscure quests, item descriptions, and difficult to parse lore, or the crazy punishing nature of the risk-reward combat baked into its foundation, these games can come across as if they're exclusively for the masochistic elite, individuals that revel in the unforgiving nature of these titles. But what if I were to tell you that this genre is not nearly as insurmountable as it seems? The truth is that while yes, these games can be challenging, they're far from the inflexible wall-bashing experiences that they're often portrayed. To aid you in your journey of discovery, I've carefully handpicked three games with the explicit intent to ease players into the genre. Not only are each of these games good starting points in their own right, but the order I've chosen to talk about them also represents their level of accessibility, from the easiest to jump into and play to the most demanding. But I don't want it to be lost that all three are great starting points, and I implore everyone to choose the one that makes the most sense for you. With that out of the way, here are my choices. Some might be a little surprised to see Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order pop up on this list. And while the debate on the internet rages on whether or not it's a Souls-like, it cannot be denied that it bears the distinct hallmarks of the genre. From bonfire-style meditation points that allow you to heal and level up, heavy emphasis on blocking, dodging, and reading enemy movements, exploring interconnected levels that loop back around for easier traversal, and even losing experience upon death, and you practically have all of the ingredients that make a Souls-like. Outside of said mechanics, there are a few things that Jedi Fallen Order does that strays away from the conventions of Souls-likes. For one, the game tells a more traditional narrative, so you don't need detective-like observational skills to piece together a cryptic tale. You can simply play the game normally and perfectly understand what's going on. As far as the difficulty is concerned, Jedi Fallen Order has four settings that can be changed at your leisure, making the game as easy or as hard as you feel comfortable with, which is a luxury seldom offered in the genre. One of the reasons why this is such a great entry point is the Star Wars license that adds an air of familiarity right from the get-go. Thankfully, the game doesn't require any sort of deep knowledge of Star Wars in order to be enjoyed, as it has an original cast of characters that are experiencing their own story within that universe. Another reason why this game is a strong entry point is due to the mostly linear upgrade system. Committing to a specific build in a Souls game can be a stressful experience for some, where the uncertainty of whether or not you leveled up the right stats or equipping the appropriate gear inducing undue anxiety. Jedi Fallen Order has no such complications, opting instead for a simple skill tree that allows the player to expand their moveset and enjoy passive buffs. This means that every single skill and upgrade is an inherently positive one, which all work towards improving your character and allows you to focus on more actionable content, like the weighty combat and cool level design. More than just a stellar starting point, for those dipping their toes in Souls likes, Jedi Fallen Order is just a really solid experience, and with its sequel on the horizon, there's no better time to see why this game is strong in the Force. Yep, your eyes aren't deceiving you. That Mimi game where the guy yells about killing chaos is actually a really good Souls-like. As you might expect, the story isn't really the reason to jump into this one, as it's fairly basic and silly. However, the combat and job systems are what make this game a real winner. If you've ever thought to yourself that an action game that utilizes Final Fantasy's classic job system would be a really cool idea, then you're in luck. That's exactly what Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origins offers, and it's just as fun as it sounds. Leveling up all the different jobs individually is a ton of fun, and being able to switch between two of them mid-battle adds a lot of versatility to one's playstyle. 
If you're a more reserved and careful player, you can equip the White Mage for healing and the Dark Knight for high defense. Or if you're the type that loves dishing out massive damage, you can equip the Monk for quick melee damage and the Black Mage for devastating magical spells. These combinations and several others are precisely why the ability to switch between jobs makes the game so accessible, as it accommodates a variety of different playstyles. None of this would matter, however, if the core combat wasn't so good. With a variety of weapons, abilities, and tons of combos to string together, the level of depth here is to be expected from the same team that brought us Ninja Gaiden, Neo, and the recently released Wulong Fallen Dynasty. When you look past the memes and get right down to it, Stranger of Paradise is so much more fun than it might seem, showing that killing chaos is actually quite a good time. Believe it or not, the progenitors of the genre itself also made one of the most accessible Souls games that you can play. While definitely the hardest to get into of the three, Elden Ring nonetheless has one defining distinction when compared to other From Software titles, its vast open world. Unlike Dark Souls or Sekiro, for example, if you got stuck on an area or boss, while there may be an alternate path or two you can take instead, chances are you just had to figure out how to overcome the obstacle that's in your way. In the case of Elden Ring, however, the world is so huge that if you find yourself struggling with something, you can quite literally jump on your horse, go in the opposite direction, and just do something else entirely. This alone makes the game feel so much more inviting, as it allows players to tackle the game's incredible amount of content at your own pace, while still feeling as if they're seeing new and interesting locations and enemies. This also goes hand in hand with a feeling of constant progression, as the open world means that you rarely, if ever, have to grind. Exploring different locations means new gear and spells to obtain as well as tons of runes that'll allow you to purchase better stuff or, more importantly, level up your character. All of this steadily leads you to grow stronger and stronger by the minute, which in turn makes the game a tiny bit more manageable, all the while sidestepping the possible fatigue that comes with being stuck on a tough Souls boss with fewer alternatives for progression. This game also happens to be very accommodating for build variety, because if you find that you're not happy with how your character is turning out, you can easily reset your stats and try something entirely different. With all of these quality of life improvements, and Elden Ring itself being a fantastic experience, it really is no surprise why this is the one that broke into the mainstream. And that, my friends, are three games that are perfect for newcomers to Souls games. My hope is that with these entry points into the genre, people can see that these games are really not so tough and can be enjoyed by anyone. And maybe, after trying out these games, you'll have the courage and confidence to jump into other titles like Neo or Bloodborne, as you'll see that the skills you've cultivated will carry over quite nicely. This is quite an expansive genre, however, and I'm sure there are other games that can also act as good starting points. So I want to hear what you think about that. Post your thoughts in the comments below and let's talk about it. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.